Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we are going to calculate the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of sine n over n. And at the end of the video, I will show you guys a really cool improper integral and an infinite series. They have a super nice connection. So be sure you watch that. Anyway, hmm, how can we solve this though? Power series, integration, both from alpha. Well, I don't know. How about the complex world? Well, let's give it a try. So here is the deal. We are going to use sine theta being equal to e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta all over 2i. And we have done this kind of things quite a few times in the past, right? The complex definition for sine theta. So now let's go to a complex row and hope for the best. So here we go. This is going to be the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. And of course, for sine n, we can just put the n into the theta. So we will get e to the i n minus e to the negative i n over 2 i. And of course, we still have that n. And the red part is the sine n in the complex world. And from here, I think let's just break down the fraction here. And also, perhaps we'll put a 2 in the front. So here we have. 1 over 2i. I know I'm on the bottom, but this time I'm okay with it. So we can thank you. This is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. And we will have two little fractions. The first one will be something over n. And the second one we will have minus something over n as well. Well, I'm about to put this right here. But notice we have e to the i n. He has that n. Let me write it like this e to the i and then raised to the nth power. Of course, this is the same as that. And the reason for me to do that is because when we have something to the n over n, we have a really nice power series that we can use. And of course, we will do the same right here. And by the way, this is the minus. So for this one, we'll just put e to the negative i and then raised to the nth power. Very, very nice. And now, what is the power series that we are going to use? Well, it's not quite the best friend, but we'll be using this one. It's the integrated version of the best friend, all right? So here is the deal. Well, let me look at it this way. When we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, you can check to my back, right? It's a logarithm function, all right? But anyway, I'm going to look at this right here, z to the nth power over n like this. This right here is actually equal to negative n depends on which kind of log you want to use in terms of the long location. You can put on capital L-O-G, and in math, that's log base E, and that's the complex log with principal branch. So up to you. And you can put on natural log as always, and you can uh, put on L-O-G, little ones. Well, let me not make it too complicated. Let me just, actually, let me just do the math. Negative capital L-O-G because we are in the complex world for this. So just to be respectful, at least for this time, right? And we don't need an absolute value. You can just put this down and we put down 1 minus right, Z. So it's an integrated version of the best friend. This right here, it's good when, let me just put this down right here. When the absolute value of Z is less than or equal to 1, but Z cannot be equal to negative 1. This right here is the condition on this right here. Well, this right here is the input, namely it's the z. If you look at e to the i, this right here is the complex number in the polar form, and of course, the r is just 1 right here. Likewise, the r is 1. So it satisfies this condition. So that means we can just put this right here and use it legitimately, right? OK, we'll just continue. Here we will have 1 over 2i, and I know I am still on the bottom, but I'm OK this time. Don't worry about it. And we will have the sum of this. Of course, we can just put e to the i in here. That will be the first part. And let me open the parentheses. And when we do that, we will get negative log of 1 minus e to the i. That's the first part. And of course, for the second part, here is the minus. And the sum of this, we can put this right here into here, and we'll end up with a negative log. And of course, negative times this negative will make it positive. And we have log of 1 minus the input here is e to the negative i, like that. 
Great. Okay. Hmm. Man, this and that, they are almost the same, huh? But let's, let's see how this and this and that we can do. Perhaps let's work with this part because I know e to the negative i is the same as 1 over e to the positive i. So perhaps that might be helpful. I'm just going to do some algebra right here. Take a look of this logarithm. We have log of 1 minus. Write this as 1 over e to the positive i. And perhaps we can just get a common denominator inside and we will get log of, well, multiply e to the i, e to the i, so we get e to the i minus 1, and on the bottom we still have e to the i. And of course, right here we can just break it apart. This is going to be log of e to the i minus 1, and minus log of e to the i. And I know, technically, when we break this apart, we should put down a plus 2 pi i times an uh, integer. But in this case, we can just look at the branch cut from negative pi to, to pi. And this is enough, right? This is it. Let me just tell you guys that. All right. This is nice because, again, we can cancel it out very nicely. But here we have e to the i minus 1. This is 1 minus e to the i. Again, they are almost the same. Let's make it the same. I will switch the word up the switch of the order of subtraction. And of course, we can just do the following. This is log, and I will just factor out negative 1. So we can look at negative 1 times this right here being e to the i minus 1. You switch the order, which is 1 minus e to the i. And close parentheses, close parentheses, minus this and that. We can just cancel the out, and we just get the i right here. Again, we break this apart. So we end up with log of negative 1 plus log of this, 1 minus e to the i. And again, we don't have to do anything weird. And in fact, I will make, just make another video on why I don't want to break this apart. And I know you guys can also look at this as a factor thing things out, but I don't know, just want to do it this way. Anyway, just trust me for now, this right here is the jet. You don't have to do anything crazy, all right? And right here, you can think you by writing down minus i. Okay, what's log of negative 1? Take the principal value of this, you get pi i, right? So you end up with pi i, and you guys can watch my other videos for this, and I will just write down the rest. Plus log of 1 minus e to the i minus i. Well, this is so wonderful because we can put this right here, and this is what we are going to get. This is equal to, man, I am still on the bottom, but again, this is enjoyable. So, I don't mind. Anyway, we write this down, which is negative log of 1 minus e to the i. And for all this part, we'll just write this down. So, we have plus pi i and plus log. And watch this out. This right here is 1 minus e to the i. 1 minus e to the i. Uh -huh. And, of course, in the end, we have that minus i like this. Well, well, what can we do? You see, this right here is negative, and this is the positive version of that. Of course, they can cancel each other out. In the end, as you can see, we just have 1 over 2i times this minus that. And, of course, let me just put this down. We have altogether pi i minus i over 2i. And of course, we can just cancel all the i's. Finally, we'll see all in all, we get pi minus 1 over 2. And in fact, that is the answer for that. Very, very cool, right? Good. Now, let me show you guys what's even better than this one right here. Well, hopefully you guys have seen my video on the integral of something to infinity of sine x over x dx. This right here is pi over 2 if we go from 0. But because this right here, it's an even function, if we change this to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, we can just multiply the right-hand side by 2. So we end up with pi. Well, well, you see, this right here will give us pi minus 1 over 2. 
if you double it, you will have pi minus 1. But if you double it, you are not taking the case when n is equal to 0. Well, if n is equal to 0, and if you are willing to take a convention that sine 0 over 0 is equal to 1, then you can end up this equal to the sum as n goes from negative infinity to positive infinity of sine n over n. And again, to make this legit, you might want to say by the convention that sine 0 over 0, this is equal to 1. And of course, you might be able to do this in a slightly more legitimate way. You can define f of x is equal to sine x over x if x is not equal to 0, and f of x being equal to 1 if x is equal to 0. And you can integrate that function, and then you do that summation. And in that case, that would be more legit. But as you can see, this infinite, this improper integral, it's the same as this infinite series. Wow! Very cool. You change the integral sign into the, the summation sign, and they have the same value. And both of them, magically, they equal to pi. Just amazing. If this is not amazing, I don't know what it is. You tell me. Right? So let me just box this. <sighs> so good.